rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Oh, I agree. So I there, are, so. there are certain behaviors that we have. The way you see it is death. So the product of it is going to be the outcome, and the, 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 the uh, result of sinful behaviors is going to be the demise of something. It's right. going to kill the relationships, time, finances, dreams, whatever is happening there. There's going to be something that ends tragically. Yes. You know, the level of tragedy depends on whatever sin it is that you're engaged in, but uh, it's going to be tragic. Th these are like truths that are not mutable. These are standards that are set forth by the kingdom and the king himself. And those are the things that we're trying to grow toward and that we're trying to exemplify for those who are coming into the kingdom. Um, can I cause a, a baby to lift 250 pounds? No. But I can show him how to lift it. And I think that that's, that's where our conversation has always been verbal. But I think our conversation should have been our lives. Yeah, I, I agree. Can't, I can't talk to you about love if I'm not displaying love to you. Hey. My greater conversation is that I love you. And that's motivating me to do certain things towards you. Yeah. I like that. You know, and I like the scripture. Remember what the scripture said? That it's a testimony uh, that, that, that helps us overcome as our testimony for somebody else to help, to help them overcome, right? Yep. So, <laughs> so the bottom line is, you are ungodly if you're not in Christ. So the bottom line is you, as a, as a believer coming in Christ, is somebody who now represents what the changes occurs, right? The changes from being ungodly. He called me as, a, as somebody that's ungodly. Bishop, that one scripture you had say it was, when that one scripture was talking about the, the works of the flesh, and the fact is that as such were some of you, Right? <laughs> Amen, Jimmy. It's some, some, of, some of us were ungodly. Oh, yeah. You are. And, and, and we come. <laughs> but it's good, though. Because I think a person can understand how to grow through our weaknesses. I, the, the thing that I find has been error for us, for me anyway, is that when I spoke in terms of growth and I talked to people about growing, yeah, the growth was more along a cardinal line than it was a spiritual one. It's all about dying to the flesh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were, the, and as a member of the church, body of Christ, and, and, and the organization that it was a part of, I was teaching people how to be more successful at cardinality than I was teaching them to be spiritual. You talking about when you was not saved? When you well, I was saved, <laughs> but I was I was walking in error, <laughs> and I was a part of an organization that taught error. So, and, and I think that becomes the, the issue. A lot of times when Christ is dealing with us, his goal in our lives does not line up with, and the kingdom goals in our lives do not line up with the world system. We're not there to have make you have a better family or a better, this is why the, 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 the conversation is started. It's not to improve your family or your house or deliver you from this or deliver you. It's to improve you. You know, it's to grow you in the spirit. It's to grow you in the character of Christ. Be because right. a lot of times when that happens, the people that you are affiliated with will reject you. They will turn on you because you, you and, and that's not something that we taught is that once you begin to look more like Christ, and it's pretty evident, this is evidence in the Bible that if you live godly, you shall be persecuted. Jesus himself said, I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. So the more we look like Christ, there's there's an increased opportunity that there's going to be some rejection. But yeah. that's not what we taught. We taught that the, the more you act like Christ, the more you look like Christ, the more you do things in a godly manner, the more successful you're going to be at such and such and such and such. And uh, I can't say that that's not going to be a byproduct. It may be a byproduct, but it's done. It's definitely not a focus. You said you know, well, it shouldn't be. And unfortunately, like I've said, uh, I think Jesus is probably the most misrepresented person ever in the history of the world. I think that uh, I think that we have truly misrepresented him and given him a bad look because we push, 
you gonna have you gonna live in a better house. You are gonna get a nicer car. You, your health is gonna be perfect. You you gonna have you know you gonna have a boy and a girl. You know what I'm saying? One of each. Everything's gonna be right. And that's that's the marketing approach that we've used to try to bring people to the kingdom. But that's not what the kingdom is about. There is not. But again, we as representatives or or salesmen or or or, or people that are here to market uh the kingdom i think we've grossly misrepresented what it is why it is and i mean i think it's like anything else if i mean if you join the team and you never play baseball then the more you come to practice the more you play we teach you the fundamentals you get the skills your level of play is going to improve and, and hopefully you'll begin to enjoy the game more and then you become more competitive so there's no expectation that if you've never picked up a ball that you're going to come here and be herschel walker same same thing in what we do there's no expectation that you're going to come here and walk this thing like paul i mean we we have to understand that hey you know look at this it's a discipline it's a yeah. freaking discipline it's and good. and and but 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 it has eternal weight i mean yes. eternal ramifications yes. and that's that's what's important and it could also totally benefit us but i mean the bible says it's gonna rain on the just as well as the unjust let's be honest with people you know what i'm saying in right. this world, you're going to have tribulation to be a good cheer because I've overcome the world. Even in what we just read, the scripture just brought out, talked about how we have that, uh, how we glory in tribulation uh -huh. because because it's not about what's going on left, right in front of you. It's about the eternal and the understanding of what we have. I mean, just like, say, for instance, this um, coronavirus. Right. Now, I can spin this thing and speak about it from a negative perspective because that's the narrative I want to paint. And I can make it look so horrible and so bad and so and so and so disruptive and just so detrimental that 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 anybody that even sees, reads, or hears about it gonna become depressed, scared, and 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 and, and all kind of mental. But you know what? There's another side as well, too. I can be optimistic about the situation. I can talk about the 98% survival rate. I can talk about the number of people under 60 that is 0.006 that they that they don't die. That is mostly uh, older people that I can talk about so many different things if I've decided to try to be optimistic about it. Like my daddy used to always tell me, figures don't lie, but liars figure. You can look at them stats. And it all depends on who's telling the story. Can can paint it whichever way they want to paint it. Let's let's be honest about that. Right. It's about whoever's telling the story. And I think we have a responsibility to be optimistic and to glory in tribulations and put that hope out there because that's what we represent. So I don't understand why we, the doom and gloom uh, purveyors, when we shouldn't be. Because that's not even what we're a part of. And, and I think that that, you know, when, earlier when I mentioned that, come out from among them, be separate. That's a practice that we have really not executed. We did, and I and I I can I can most confess. I mean, you got caught up in the in the rhetoric and in, 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 in reports, and even the behavior of the people, which really wasn't significant uh, to the outcomes. What what the, what should the church have been doing at that point, or what is the church doing at that point? There's there's a voice that's telling us, giving us some kind of directive. If this is truth, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. They drink their deadly things. They'll let no eyes on them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. If that's legitimate, what fear had we? Or should, well, how should we have walked in fear? So there, there is a lot that we're still growing at. And I believe the church is being perfected because the Lord said that he would present it right. to himself. Have a right. right. spot and I believe it's ringing such thing by the washing the water by the word. But it is a process. Absolutely. We are progressively getting better, even though sometimes it's like we're totally falling apart. We are making errors, but we are recovering from those errors. He himself said that he would present the church himself. Yes. It was not our effort, it's his actually. So, and you know what? This, yeah. thing is a, this thing is a perfect mirror. So if we'll take the time to look <laughs> at it, it'll show us our imperfections and flaws so that we can be perfected. It has a perfecting uh, mechanism about it. And I think that's Done. true. Because the Bible teaches me, speak the word only. Now, I can speak the word or I can echo the media. 
Come on. I have to make a choice. I have to make a choice. I can echo the media and say, well, I'm just speaking the truth. I'm just speaking the truth. What is truth? Is what the media say truth or is what the word of God says truth? We, 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 we have to watch ourselves because we may, we'll start saying, well, whatever. Well, that's, that's right there. That's the truth. No, that book in your hand is the truth. That's it. Don't get and, and, and there's no other measure. And, and there's no other measure. There is none. There is no, right. we, and we should be evidence of that. Our witnesses. Behavior, yes. Witnesses. witnesses of it. Evidence to say that if I show fear in the midst of this, I am not evidencing the power of God. How you different from the world? I'm not. I wouldn't be. I did. I wasn't. You know. So, well, obedience to God in the midst of it. How should we address it? And I think that's the thing that that I think I lost sight of. I mean, we can lose that, sight of. I think. I think. They, I think that really start off with the talking about the fact is the ungodly. He 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 came to save the ungodly. Every last one of us, Marvel and I, we got to be born again anyway. So that's what I'm saying. We are all coming in, in one sense or another, as the ungodly, right? It's not about the, like you say, it's not about the, the, the picture. It's not about being this great, wonderful, wealthy, and getting great, you know, rich and all that stuff. It's moving from, from unrighteousness to righteousness. And that unrighteousness is because we, we were born into sin. Right? Therefore, we're ungodly, but we are made and justified through faith through Jesus Christ. And, and we try to bring everyone, reconcile them from being ungodly to godly. Right? And then you know what? Them. And you're right, Pastor. You're 100% right. But unfortunately, I think if you, because of us, again, talking about us now as his witnesses and his, his media outlets, so to speak, his salesmen. I think if you if you gathered a hundred people that were didn't have nothing to do with God and asked them what's the central theme of the of what we preach, they would say, Oh, it's prosperity. It's prosperity. Because that's what we push, that's what we've taught, that's what we taught, that's what we showcase, that's what we act like. You know what I'm saying? It's no different than looking at the pimps. They got the nice cars, they got the nice suits, they got the nice women, they got all the hundred, they got all the money. I don't see any different from what we've pushed as a narrative. And that's not what we should be pushing. So the right. central theme, the central theme should not be, oh, it's about prosperity. And that's what you and that's and that's where we have failed him and misrepresented him. Because I agree with you. That's what where you're saying is what we should be. What yeah. I'm saying is what's actually going on in the world today. And that's and that's unfortunately mainstream uh Christianity has not pushed the right narrative, in my opinion. I agree because one of the things too is that because if if we read on the if we keep reading what Elder was Elder this other part of that part of that chapter, because uh, we do got to show people what's the difference. There got to be a contrast between being saved and not, yeah. made and ungodly. Right? Yeah. But we have to show that this is what happened. Like read that right, verse eight through eleven. But God commanded. His love, praise God. But God commanded this, his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Very important scripture. Very important. Very much important. more than, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Yeah, right. Very important. Much more than being now justified by his blood, much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Yes. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled, we were praise God. Come on now. It's good scripture, man. Uh, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Yes. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Yes. And not only so, but <clears throat> and not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Yes. Yes. That, that, that's, that's good stuff. Yep. Yeah. You know, I think this book, I think this book, to be honest with you, in my opinion, uh, is more about relationship than it is about prosperity. It's about relationships. It's relationships. Are horizontal and vertical. Yes. And, and that is the prosperity. When, when he said, I come that they might have, I thought, you know, it's like, I'm sorry if I, I might be wrong with this, but it sounds like sometimes that Jesus is double talking when he says, I, I come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. 
Well, who is life? He tells us, or what is life? He tells us later on in one place, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, and oh, they say, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. Well, if you delight yourself in him, is he the desire of your heart? Yes. I mean, if we truly delight in him. So when Christ, when we're talking, as we grow, and we mature from carnality to in spirituality, it's so, it turns so far away from acquisition of material stuff. It's ridiculous. Jesus was not talking about material stuff. No. He was literally, like Jim was saying, he was talking about the relationship between God and his creation. The sonship, the oneness that's oft time mentioned in the scripture and Jesus prays for before he departs from the planet. That we would be one with the Father, even as he was one with the Father, that we would be one with each other. Yeah. yeah. I think, and this is Johnson, this is y'all definitely pray for me on this. We're looking at strength being disseminated in such a manner, power being disseminated in such a manner that anybody affected by it is edified by it. Exactly. So God pours himself out and poured himself out that we might have life. Come on, man. Our training is to do the same. Exactly. It's not to come upon a person and, and, and judge and condemn them. And that I gotta leave this long. It's too good. Uh, when he said, "While we were yet sinners, yeah, while we were yet messed yeah. up, jacked up," and I know it's true for me, he yeah. died for us. Yes. And if he had not done that, we who were yet sinners would still be yet sinners. Yes. <laughs> you know, if he had not sacrificed himself while we was in the throes of our mess. And, 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 and just jacked up across the board, we would be dead, we would be headed for hell. But he looked at the despair that we were suffering and said, this is what needs to take place in order for them to be reconciled to me. In order for them to have life, I yes. gotta go give my life. Absolutely. He's Amen. gotta forgive us. He's gotta give life to us before we can have life. So. So, and, and I think that is the pattern of behavior that he has mandated that we display. Yes. Well, you know, too, I, I think that we missed, because uh, speaking of the kingdom, um, over over in Matthew, I think it's the sixth chapter, where it talk, talks about seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And then the Bible goes on to say that in all these things, well, Amen. those things he had just been talking about was houses and lands yes. and clothes and all that kind of stuff. So. I think when we become to maturity, that those are not the things. In other words, we don't chase those things. It, it chases us. They become, a, they, the, the vortex changes. It changes yeah. it for us good. going after those things to those things coming after us. Yes. And that's the difference. But our focus, which we have not taught, we've taught the things. And he said, that's what the heathens do. Yes. And so we've behaved just like the heathens because that's what we've trumpeted and that's what we've highlighted. When what he said was, don't highlight those things, don't trumpet those things, you trumpet the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And in those things, well, that's just like you said earlier, a byproduct, that's gonna come with it. But yeah. that's not what our focus is, but that is a part of the benefits package, don't get me wrong, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Yes, my I, 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 a testimony. When my wife was on the planet, 24 seven of my time was spent focusing on her well-being, her care. She was ill. So I never thought about how my own health very much while she was on the planet. And I didn't have nearly the problems I have now. <laughs> when yeah. she left is when I started manifesting illness. I mean, it's, it's like all of a sudden she leaves the planet and I don't have anybody to focus on healing or trying to keep well and my health falls apart. So wow. there's just there's something. And I mean, that's that's a fight. I went wow. from walking five miles a day to congestive heart failure. It's like I started to cascade as far as my health was concerned. Just wow. you know, worse and worse. But as long as she was on the planet, none of that was the issue. I didn't have time to think about being sick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I was too busy doing that. And it seems as though that's the process. It's this selflessness, this selflessness, this self-sacrifice appears to be the standard that has been set for us. Yeah. And regardless of who the person is, regardless of the state of that person, whether it be saint or sinner, friend or enemy, our behavior has been dictated to us to pour out yourself on their behalf. 
Yeah. Is, is that is that accurate or is that my mis mis mis? Well, I, mis think, I, I think so, true. But that what you generally talk about the fact is that you know even in this politics, uh, I was listening to one of the uh, articles or commercials uh, with uh, I think the lady named is Lawfer, the the, the lady that's running against Warnack, and one of the things that they caught my attention was pursuit of the American dream. Did did you, did you ever heard that word before, Jimmy? That, the, the, the American dream. Of course. That's and, why every nation on earth wants to get to America. Because we've yeah. counted this American dream all over the world. Everybody wants to get to the big BX in the sky. See, the American dream, it, it, that's almost like saying the American vision, right? <laughs> of, of, of capitalism or whatever, but it's saying the American dream is to be a millionaire or a billionaire. And, and yet, that percentage is one percent of the world, or even in this country, is less than a one percent, right? And yet they call that the American dream. If everybody is trying to get into that as the American dream, opposed to what Christ is. Whoa! Well, come in with a bang, brother. Come in with a bang, brother. Let's Hallelujah. <laughs> I think I think that's where we meet I think Elder, I think that's where that conversation of ministering to people is. We're not focusing on this the material dreams of wealth dream. We focus on the right standing with God it, and man. It, 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 surprisingly enough, that has been the most encouraging thing that I've experienced. Last year, <laughs> that's why I believe that the United States of America. I feel confident about. I feel good about where we're headed as a nation, is because the United States is, is up to this point functioning cardinally, as we all did when we came into the faith initially. And like yeah. any the growth of any man, this country is growing as a nation, and I yeah. think we're moving into the spirituality portion of it. It was a very selfish dream. It was a self-centered and self-edifying and self-uplifting and self-promoting kind of a situation that we, and we have seen the manifestation of that. And this is not a shot at anybody, mm -hmm. but this is just a reality. The, 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 the politic of our nation gives us example of men who exalt themselves above their constituents, their wow. constituents and use them to elevate themselves. Wow. That ain't God. And no nation has survived that. Every nation, that's why no nation survives <laughs> because when you use your power to subdue and to press people down, when someone rises up stronger than you, they're going to overthrow you. Wow. We are moving into a place now. I think we really are. And the church is going to take the lead in this where we are using our power, our influence, our wealth, our resources to and they call it socialism that's unfortunate i hate that, that they, they, they make this such a bad bad but the united states of america as a nation has to shift from hoarding wealth and stuff to disseminating it equitably among the populace <laughs> that is where we're headed as a nation and that is that is done by love the very thing that fuels the kingdom of god it is the thing that this country in the church should lead this country into doing there are people out there out with, without houses, but they're empty houses. There are people out there that can't eat, but we're throwing food in the garbage. Mm. Focus mm. more on equitable dissemination of, of wealth, resources. Nobody in America would be hungry. Nobody in America would be homeless. We could have shut the government down for three months. I mean, not the government, but the, the economy down for three months and still survived it and put away whatever the threat might have been, legitimate or not. But people hoard. That ain't God. That's and the world probably, system. Yeah, yeah. And you know, but, you know, Elder, I do like the fact is that we are showing that love and those, those food lines of yes. people, people feeding people. That's yes. the love of God. Yes. And, and you know, there were, there, there's been some images. I'm sorry, I mean, cut you off. I'm excited about it. And I think that's what God is. Now we're going to teach that from the church perspective. Because so that's exactly. what Jesus did. Exactly. The Judeo portion of it, we finished. We ain't taking land from nobody and hoarding it. We ain't driving folk off. 
No, what we're doing now, the same thing that they did in the Christian perspective, Judeo-Christian, we're growing into that born again. And there's a commercial on television that says that this country is being reborn. Yeah. And I think it is. I truly believe that this country is coming to a realization of who Jesus is. And we're going to begin to follow him. Some of us are, a uh, yeah. large majority of them. Yeah. This hoarding doesn't work. Yeah. It's wasteful. It is, it is destructive. Yeah. And it's, have the church stepped up? The church is helping out in those food lines. Amen, man. You know, and, and it's going to come more. It's going to be more like that. You know, we don't need a, a edifice that's two miles high. You can have a lower ceiling and use the money to to just strengthen your 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 your, uh, your, the, the, your congregation. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to be taking up a, a building. I mean, what do you call it, a building fund every three months to build a build a build, bigger building? Send some kids to school. You know what I'm saying? Bury some people that don't have insurance. You know what I'm saying? Take help people. Disseminate the wealth. Well, hey there.